there are two things that get me excited, computers and building things. So when I found a blog dedicated to how a massive company actually builds some really, really cool comp sci related things, I took it upon myself to see how much of it I could actually replicate. This is the Riot Games technology blog. This blog has posts about practically every subsection of computer science that you could be interested in. And the post that inspired this video and my project is this one. Scalability and load testing for Valorant. Now this post goes over some of the infrastructure, some of the testing that they did to deploy Valorant on the game's release and make sure that it was a stable release. This post is what I used as a baseline for my project and I mimicked most of the decisions that they made, but I did have to freestyle a couple of times and I'll go over that in the video. But yeah, it was a great read and a great project. I love this project, even though <laughs> it might be a little bit of a Frankenstein's monster, but uh, it was a ton of fun to work on. So I'll go over most of the learnings, most of the decisions and some of the key features of the project in the video. So enjoy. Before I go into my simulation, let's see how the big dogs do things. For this example, we'll be using Riot Games. Everything begins with the services written to support a game of League of Legends as well as their meta systems. Those services are then put into a bundle called shards. These services are configured to automatically scale up or down based off of the current load. Think of a shard as a pre-built kit that has everything you would need to play a game of League of Legends, for instance. Those shards are then deployed all over the world to different geolocations. They do this so the game servers themselves are closer to the players, reducing latency. Also, if one shard goes down for whatever reason, the rest of the infrastructure is completely unaffected. Now, player clients need to be able to talk to the server. Moving data from one place to another is not as simple as you might think. Even Riot Games went so far as to create their own internet to better optimize the path that game packets take, reducing latency. The blog tries to simulate 2 million active users. Now, with their setup, they have a bunch of shards sent all over the place for each geolocation. One shard seems to be able to support 10,000 active players per four CPU cores. So that was the performance benchmark I was trying to hit. My favorite part of any project is giving it a code name. And since Class of the Titans is one of my favorite shows from when I was a kid, I chose to give the project the name Olympus. Now, originally, Olympus was just supposed to be something that I used to test Pappy against, which is my API load tester. If you want to know a bit more on how that works, I'll link a video I made on it in the description. But yeah, while working on this tool to test Pappy against, it kind of completely grew into its own thing. In the actual simulation, I wrote a player behavior playbook that walks through some of the steps a player might take while interacting with an online game. The first is queuing up for a game. They will connect to a matchmaking service and the matchmaking algorithm will search for other players to match them with based off their rank. The players who are in queue reside in a high frequency, low latency database for the matchmaking service to pull from. Once the players are matched, the matchmaking service can send a request to the game server service asking to spawn a match for these players. The match gets spawned and the match made players are then whitelisted to connect to that server. In Olympus's process, there's a randomized sleep timer synced across the connected players to simulate the game being played out. For the purposes of this blog post and this project, no actual game servers were developed, just the surrounding platform. At the end of a match, a pseudo-randomized data dump containing end of match results is produced and sent off to some of the databases. Now that the gameplay playbook has completed, the check stats playbook then runs. This simulates a player checking their match history and personal rank after a match. Lastly, as a simple visibility layer, all of these services push metrics to an instance of Prometheus and the data is visualized in Grafana. Now to see the actual program run. First things first, I set up a Docker Compose file that'll launch all my services in a specific way. One of the main specifications is that all of these services are running only on four cores, like the blog post. As you can see, some of the main ones are the Postgres database, the Redis database for matchmaking, the matchmaking service itself, and a few others. 
Now we're gonna run another program that I wrote that'll act as the simulated 10,000 test clients. Launching 10,000 test clients is not an easy task, so it takes a little bit for all of the clients to actually spin up. Once they do start spinning up, you can see the output over here spitting out some sort of counter. That's just so that I can track if a client fails or goes down for whatever reason, that number will decrement. If it stays at 10,000 the entire way through, I know all of these clients are up and running normally. Printing to the screen can sometimes be expensive, but over the grand scheme of things, the journey one thread takes to simulate one client will generally be over the course of a few seconds, so missing out on a millisecond or two isn't too big of a problem here. Something else to take note of is if you look at the system resources and whichever process is most in demand, it's gonna bounce between Postgres and Redis. This is because when all 10,000 players are sort of lined up hitting the matchmaking server at any given time, Redis will be the thing taking up the most system resources. If the randomized times make it so that there's a majority of players hitting the check stats playbook, which checks things like match history and player statistics, then the Postgres database will be the thing getting hit the hardest. Here you can see your Grafana dashboard tracking some of the main metrics for the different services. So here you can see matchmaking, game server, and some platform services. Some of the basic ones is we track the total players in game, total players in queue. We track how many people have hit the platform services. So like the match history endpoint and all of that stuff. And we track latency in the percentiles. So from fifth percentile up to 95th percentile. If you run the program long enough, you'll be able to see some patterns to the graph. You'll see a massive bump in players in queue and a massive trough in the players in game. And then those will reverse once all of those players in queue get into a game. An example of that is right here. Once the players found a match, they left the matchmaking queue and instead got into a game. So you see that massive spike in the game server and the massive trough in the matchmaking server. And here you can see the Redis server getting hit really, really hard. At this point in the simulation, you can probably assume that a ton of players are in matchmaking trying to find a match. In fact, you don't even need to assume it. You can see right there that the matchmaking server is also doing a lot of work. Now the system hardware that I'm using at the moment is a 16 core CPU. Now, if you take a look at the Docker compose file for the actual project, you'll be able to see that I'm hard limiting which CPU cores that these services can take up, specifically only letting them use 0, 1, 2, and 3. This is an example with the matchmaking, game server, and platform server, but all services use this limitation. This is an example of what one shard could look like. As it stands, the platform can support 10,000 users. The thing is, after it's running at 10,000 users for long enough, it gets a little unstable and then starts dropping connections rapidly. I'm not really sure why it does this, so that's probably the next thing they're gonna try and figure out. When building a project that runs under this kind of load, it's kind of like building a car for the 24 hours at Le Mans. Every single washer, every single bolt in the entire car could be a point of failure for the whole thing. It really does feel like the perfect embodiment of Murphy's Law, where anything that can go wrong ends up going wrong. It ends up hitting some sort of equilibrium at 4,900 users, and then it stops dropping connections. So it's got to be something related to that. But this is just to show you that the journey with developing things like this is by no means a smooth one. If what they were able to pull off in the blog post was a MotoGP bike, what I was able to pull off was probably closer to a bicycle. Even given that, a project like this really does a good job of broadening your perspective on fields like distributed systems and live operations. I hope you enjoyed the video and take it easy.